Hi again, everybody. Jeff Joniak at Top Thayer welcoming you to Game Preview. The Bears move off to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers at Heinz Field. Welcome to PNC Studios here at Hallis Hall. Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. Uh, this is tradition. This is one yep. of those games, right? Family run franchise, the Roonies and the McCaskies, tight friends over the course of their time. But uh, you have to have a lot of respect for what the Steelers have accomplished in their franchise history. I remember the first time driving to Steelers Stadium when I was a player, and it was the most, reminded me the most of Soldier Field. Because the You're crowd, old Three Rivers, yeah, yeah, the yeah. crowd gathered there early. Uh, they were tailgating all of the every nook and cranny they could possibly put down a grill, and it was so supportive because they are Steelers fans. And it reminds me of what we see on the road, but what we see at home. So yeah, this is a game that is deep in tradition. Yeah, no question about it. Heck of a coaching matchup here as well with Mike Tomlin. Very respected coach, and we'll break down the Steelers in a moment. But first, a look at where the Bears are at right now. Certainly with a three-game losing streak, that causes a lot of anxiety. they got to get rid of it. And Matt Nagy on the coaches' show on Monday night on WBBM saying, hey, I don't care how it happens. I don't care why it happens. Win by just one point if you have to. We just need a win. Right, but you know, you have to go to the tape and you got to watch it constructively. You have to look at the areas that you can improve just by the conversation part of it. And then you have to look at the things that you did really well in the game. And there was a lot of building blocks of the future. I think the movement of Justin, the rhythm of the offense between, you know, using Darnell and A-Rob, and then including the tight end, the continuous involvement of the, the running game on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side of the ball, you're just going to have to be able to make some more interior plays by the defensive lineman. You got Roquan Alec, Danny Trevathan are playing well at the second linebacker level. If Khalil Mack doesn't play, they who's ever playing that position is they have to be included in the stats. And I know they were, they were able to get some opportunities, but you know, you just have to be a more ferocious defense and you have to understand what you're facing with Pittsburgh. You know, Ben uh, doesn't move around very well, but they have a running back that they're giving him an unbelievable amount of touches per game in second place is is not even close. And then they have a young, uh, they have a wide receiver that has more uh, targets than their big playmaker in Claypool that they brought in from Notre Dame a couple of years ago. So, you know, you just have to develop what you're doing well and continue that process. I think one thing that occurred in the 49er game, just working those edges, and Sean Desai also on the coach's show on Monday night said, yeah, we do have to get better on the edges, set the edges. You know, that includes corners tackling, that includes linebackers getting off their blocks because that was an area of concern. and. He admits the, the concern about defending the run right now. Uh, that's been several weeks now. The teams are starting to run the ball in the bear. That kind of surprised me because it's almost like you have to go exclusively into the defensive line room because they got five or six guys that can contribute at a high level. So when you get your opportunity to get into the game, then you have to have a, a high, a, a high rep. You know, a, a lot of movement, a lot of you know what your skill set is. And physicality. I think you, physicality, huh? physicality, physicality, exactly. physicality. Yeah. But you know, with the rotating system that you can have, you got to keep them fresh and fighting. So let's look at the matchup because in the trenches the Steelers will be physical up front and that running back Najee Harris he's a rookie out of Alabama 230 pounds and boy he runs hard he runs he's one of those angry runners <laughs> he's getting a lot of opportunities too yeah. and so he gets an opportunity to set you up throughout the course of the game throughout the course of the season and like you said he's a young guy that's still fresh and uh, he uh, he kind of brings on that Pittsburgh Steeler running the ball tradition of the physicality at the line of scrimmage that continues to the backfield. Yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't good last year. The Steelers did not run the ball, so they were uh, really focused on improving the run game. And you know, Harris, you're going to have to swarm him. That's the word being used by Sean Desai and the Bears defenders. This again is a game where players have to be in the right place at the right time to make the tackle and fundamentals and technique. Yeah, that, that's always the challenge on the NFL level because, you know, the running back from Mitchell last week for San Francisco to Harris this week, there's a yeah, big Leonard difference. Yeah, Fournette, Aaron Jones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you're, you get a change of pace week in and week out, and it's always about the fundamental tackling that you're, you know, kind of challenged with week in and week out. Things to watch. Now, offensively, their numbers aren't great, but Ben Roethlisberger is starting to feel good. They shed a three-game losing streak. They're now feeling good. They're back over 500 and back home at Heinz Field. Defensively at Heinz Field, that's where your concern lies. T.J. Watt has been outstanding at Heinz Field. That's where he gets the bulk of his sacks. He's leading them in sacks again. So you got to have a 
I don't know, a power wattage. Make sure it's an outage instead of a wattage because he's outstanding. <laughs> I like that, it's funny. But so if my power outage to the wattage is gonna be <laughs> multiple tight end sets, Larry Borum's in place at the right tackle position. You, you know, you have this uh, an offensive line, they gotta be physical but you've got to be able to alternate the rhythm of the snap count. If you give these guys a chance to go and evaluate the consistency of a snap count in a, a hostile environment um, in Pittsburgh, you're going to give the advantage to the defense, and that's not what you want to do. And I think every one of the tight ends, they can line up, and they can really be an asset to the offensive tackles that are lined up next to. When Watt didn't play against the Bengals because of a groin, it was the first time since 2016 that the Steelers did not have a sack. It broke a streak of 75 consecutive games, longest NFL streak and NFL record for sacks. So you can bet they're going to bring pressure. They will blitz Joe Schobert. They'll blitz from the secondary. There are capable blitzers there as well. And then we got to talk about Cam Hayward because uh, that is a one tough ombre inside there. He can push the pocket, collapse the pocket. The sack totals aren't there, but the pressures are. He's a very good player. He loves to play football, and I think it spills over to the rest of his teammates. And then you have the enthusiasm in which Watt plays with. So you got two guys that are instrumental in the success that they can have up front. But when I look at Roquan Smith, I look at Akeem, I look at Robert Quinn, the Bears have the same yeah. weaponry that they can put there. And Big Ben doesn't run very well. So if Sean Desai wants to increase the blitzes at Big Ben to see if he can run away from guys coming through the line of scrimmage, He's Let's still challenge. Big Ben, though. I know he, he is. Meaning, but meaning he's hard to bring down. I know, <laughs> but then climb on top and, you know, <laughs> chop him down. You know, get him to the ground. He's not Like a, a lion that, in the Serengeti pulling down a giraffe. But, but it, I but mean, if, that's what it is. If he's running with his back to the line of scrimmage, if he's running with his focus not downfield to a wide receiver, then you that consider that a win. So when you talk about what Pittsburgh can do to their opponent's quarterbacks, the Bears have to have that same mentality going in there to do that to their quarterback. Some numbers of note because defensively they are top 10 in all the key areas. Third down, first downs allowed, most importantly points per game allowed. So these are key areas the Bears have struggled with at times. Third down got better last week. Are there things going to happen now because of what Justin did? last week. Yeah, I think you're going to adjust the contain rush of the outside rush, the end man on the line of scrimmage. They're going to have to have more of an outside to in type of approach. They're going to have to have better coverage against who's, whomever is covering the multiple tight ends the Bears can use because they're a difficult coverage. And then you still have big play opportunities downfield with A-Rod and Mooney. Hey, run games travel, so yep. the Bears run game needs to travel well with Khalil Herbert. And, you know, talking about Darnell Mooney, he's becoming the third down target for the Bears. He's their leading receiver on third down now moving those sticks he has good chemistry brewing with Justin yeah the dude's a legit a hard target to tackle after I love the way he puts on moves as soon as he gets the ball into his control and either getting defenders to run by or just getting extra yards out of it I still don't want to lose sight of a Rob but Darnell Mooney is a really nice option on third down that's going to wrap up our look at the Bears and Steelers we'll join you on the radio starting at 420 with our pregame coverage 715 to kick off from Heinz Field on WBBM News Radio 1059. For Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Thanks for watching, everybody.